Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a tier 103 attempt within the pit. I've done a few of these and unfortunately the boss has kind of been the limiting factor. I think that's true in a lot of Diablo games. This was certainly true in Diablo Immortal, Diablo 3. When you get into the rifts as they scale higher, the boss may just be an instant quit, right? Depending on what you get. I know this tier is beatable by my character and the current gear, the setup and everything that I have. Just need to get a little bit of luck my way. Let's see what we get this way on this attempt. This boss excuse me, this mob type rather is pretty favorable. These mobs do like to group up a fair amount. They do have some ranged attacks, but in general, they'll kind of always be working towards me, which allows the tornadoes to get a lot of uptime on them. In terms of the green beams, which are gonna crowd control my character or stun me, I actually have a pretty good way to get out of that as well. I've got four charges through my boots since I have plus maximum evade charges. Then the aspect of metamorphosis on the boots as well, will just allow me to gain unstoppable. So. Should be able to deal with that. I'd like to reserve a charge, even though I know I just used my last one right there. Now replenished it. But in general, this mob type should be doable to get to the boss with roughly four minutes, which is what I should need to take the boss down. Now, I've got Elixir of Holy Bolts active on this character. I chugged it before I started hitting record. Just want to make sure that you're aware I am running the Elixir of Holy Bolts. I almost died there, unfortunately. Fortunately, rather, I stayed alive. And in general, I'm trying to work the perimeter, get massive damage right there. But if I can stay on the outskirts of the enemies, moving around and safely avoid some of the damage coming at my character, the tornadoes will just work their way in. So I like to get the mobs into choke points and just allow the tornadoes to get the maximum value. That's going to be true for any build. Another popular build, wind shear, you're going to want to get everything into a line. This is really what you're going to have to do as you push higher tiers. You need to make sure that you're maximizing the amount of damage that you can deal. Essentially, once your character survives, you just need to get more damage on the table, get larger packs. Another thing you'll notice as we get elite mobs, and I'll try to point that out again after this pack. What I'm going to do, if, uh, excuse me, frustrated there that I died. Well, let's go ahead and get back up and go in. What I was going to mention is that I'm constantly mauling. So what I'm doing is mauling. This is going to activate a number of buffs for a character. The most important ones, you're going to gain benefit from the aspect of might, which is damage reduction. Second best one is you're going to get a damage buff from our key passive. When you stay in werebear form for two seconds, we're going to get a large multiplicative damage increase. Then when we switch back into werewolf form, we'll gain an attack speed buff. So as I move from pack to pack or even look to get additional mobs, you'll notice at times I actually skip packs and I'm actually just trying to drag them along with my character and make a larger pack to then take down. Again, just try to maximize everything. This will help you get through the trash quicker. This I probably should have left, but at this point they're so low, may as well finish them off. We're going to get to the next floor here, and again, I'm going to keep mauling as I go through, and this is just to activate these buffs again. The last thing I want to do is walk up to an enemy without having that aspect of might. So I'm grabbing that pack, dragging them here to the damage resistance mobs, letting that first pack come back. You're just kind of moving more efficiently in that way. Just group up as many enemies as you can. Another thing with the elites here is I'm actually going to move around these and not really looking to kill them right off the bat. What I'm trying to do is reposition. I want to make sure that I'm aware of what they have for affixes. And then I also want to make sure that they use their abilities, right? They have something that's going to put my character in danger. I want to make sure that it goes off before I engage the enemy. And since they're AI, they typically do that right off the bat. Very rarely do they actually save it. So you notice a lot of times I'll hit elites and then move away. Get another pack there. I should be somewhat safe in the corner. Corners in general for this build are... Ah, <laughs> Eat my words there. Corners in general are high risk, high reward for this build. And this map has some areas where there's cert certain staircases that you may have noticed. And you can go down these and they'll often be clumps of enemies or clumps of elites. With this tornado build, you can go down there and just melt the enemies in like a second. A huge boost to your timer. But you can also go down there and get melted yourself if you're unaware of what they have for affixes. So just be aware of that. But if you're looking to do something for the first time, maybe you want to take a little bit of risk. If you're playing something safer, then by all means, you may want to avoid it. So here you can see just tremendous uptime. I know I'm safe because the enemies have used their abilities. As long as I'm aware of the obelisks that are shooting out those lightning bolts, I can safely position my character and just nuke them down, get all my buffs stacking up. Time-wise, I'm further behind than I would have liked. Don't think I'm out of time at this point, so we're going to keep going. These mobs are basically melting, so I can kind of continue on and make up for some of this timer. But in general, this may get a little bit close. We'll see what happens. If I die again, unfortunately, I'll have to scrap the run. Another good pack here. Take these out and just using these tornadoes into that corner, as I mentioned, a little nook, so to speak, but just capitalizing on all those tornadoes running around, hitting everything often as possible. 
again just trying to clear this out and then I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit unfortunately which is gonna eat up the clock the time actually maybe be the limiting factor in this one we'll see continuing on again just mauling I'm not using the companion skills at all and I think a lot of people are aware of that but just to say in case anybody is not aware of that for this particular setup you will not activate the companion skills except for the ravens which you will only use exclusively on the boss when you're in a comfortable position to do so that will give you a critical strike buff however aside from that the companions are really actually just going to make you more vulnerable and don't offer enough benefit so here are these enemies i need to get out of this or reposition in a second but i want to maximize what i can and in fact i may just melt them didn't quite expect that i expected to need to get away and regular mob ends up being more dangerous Let's finish these out. Feeling a lot better about the timer at this point. And just trying to keep my concentration here while talking, which is sometimes difficult. Forgive me if I'm not talking the entire time. Again, moving on, just trying to get packs. I don't want to overdo it at this point. So I talked a lot about grabbing as many enemies as possible. And now that I'm comfortable with the time that I have remaining, I'm shifting gears a little bit. So before I was grabbing as many mobs as possible in order to push that timer. Now I'm just trying to spawn the next rift without overdoing it. The last thing I want to do is get another death here before reaching the boss. So I'm kind of tiptoeing through, so to speak, just doing a small pack at a time, working my way through, and obviously that's a lot safer. This is a fantastic pack for me to just nuke. That'll get me there, pick up some health pots. Let's get in. So let's go ahead and do the elixir swap. I am going to run fortitude here in case that was too quick, but in general, you do have some offensive elixirs. I may switch if I go down. I think I may be able to have one death here and get back in we'll see getting out from the boss's AOE now I'm going to get back in and get on that uptime of course dodging any of the red circles the boss mechanics are not familiar to you at this point to be honest I'm not sure how much me talking through the mechanics is going to teach you in one clip this is the kind of thing where just getting in and doing it repeatedly is going to teach you these mechanics there's going to be a number of these in the pit pit's going to be part of every season from now on or even just the regular game if you participate in non-seasons so you'll get used to the mechanics. Don't worry if you're having difficulty now. That is a lot less damage than I would have liked to have done during the stagger. This build benefits a lot from damage to crowd controlled enemies and I would have expected or hoped to have gotten that boss lower in one go. That means I'm probably gonna need four, maybe even five staggers if I go at that rate. And I was hoping for closer to three. So dodging more AOE and I'm gonna be very careful here. I think I'm changing my stance I don't think I have time for a death. I think I have to kill this in one go. Another stagger. A lot bigger damage here. And keeping my spirit very well. So that this is going much better there. I get a lot better uptime on the boss. And now the boss is about halfway. So if I can kill this in two more staggers. Still not comfortable dying. So I'm going to have to stay alive and, and try to one-shot this essentially. Continuing to judge, dodge the red circles. Dodge those fiery orb explosions. Doesn't seem like this... Spirits are necessarily doing much of anything to me. The looks of Fortitude obviously helping soak some of that damage. As long as I don't get hit by multiple of them, I think I'm going to be all right. But they are barely moving my bar in comparison to some of the other attacks. Just evading out in order to make sure I don't get stunned. It's a good placement. I'm going to evade out of here. Instantly going into the mall. That is just to activate buffs again. Damage mitigation as well as damage buff. Very close to stagger. There it is. That was a second earlier than I would have liked, but unfortunately I had a tornado up and I'm not quite ready. I'm going to get a little bit of damage, but again, not as much as I want. So really important to time these staggers and keep track of them because that's where you're going to get a lot of your uptime. You want to make sure that you can pop your ravens, make sure you can get your blood howl off and essentially have full spirit and allow the critical strikes. To also refresh your spirit or regen it. Capitalize on as much damage as possible. So I'm going to look for one more stagger and that will probably be the kill point if I had to guess. So just play safe and I think I will have this. This boss in general, uh, not really touching my health pool as long as I don't get hit by one of the things that will one shot me. So if I play well, I think I am okay here. I'm not expecting anything out that I can't avoid. I'm not going to get another stagger. I would have expected to, but at this point I think the boss will just go down. And just about there. I 
Looks like this will do it. A couple more cooldowns. I've got Blood Howl. That will probably be not got to back out. I can get back in and finish this boss off. So that will be tier 103. So feel free to leave any questions, comments. If you have anything you want to ask about strategies while playing the build, try to go through it all while we're doing this. But in general, pretty simple to play. This build is got a learning curve to a degree by positioning yourself safely, but it's not difficult. So there you have it, guys. And this build is definitely capable of pushing higher. But I realized after recording that later on that maybe people want to see a little bit more of the stats as to see what it takes in order to get to that point. So I've logged back in here and you can take a look. Attack power, which a lot of people like to see. I don't know how good of a means that is in terms of measuring the overall character's effectiveness, but it's a decent gauge of just comparing your character to another, especially if you're using the exact same setup. So a little over 24,000. Of course, armor capped when 55,000 life, almost 56,000. Resists are essentially capped 0.1% off of a couple. You can cap these completely if you have better implicit rolls on your rings, which unfortunately I did not have. For master working, every single piece except for the Tempest Roar was ranked 12. The Tempest Roar is now ranked 12. I've done that since the Varan. Tempest Roar in general going from rank 8, which it was, to rank 12, not a huge benefit. Really probably didn't affect it at all. So essentially you just you're going to have all your pieces capped in order to have that kind of output. Biggest things for that build really just grouping mobs up and getting a boss that you can deal with. Uh, we've seen this with greater rifts, challenge rifts, regardless of which Diablo you've played. Now in Diablo 4, it's just called the pit, okay? It's always going to kind of be the same thing. If you're looking for mob types that you can clear out, good density in the trash, and then a boss that you can deal with. If you can't deal with the boss, you may as well reset the run. So hope this is beneficial. Let me know if you'd like to even see more of these. I'm happy to continue to do them whenever I do push, in case that's of any benefit. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.